Hello once again, this is Eric Bertram with Apex CCTV. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on port forwarding. Uh, this is just going to be a very simple video. Um, I'm going to teach you how to find your router's DHCP range. Uh, that'll be extremely important when selecting an IP address for your router. Um, if you don't know, DHCP uh, is a protocol that allows for new network devices to automatically acquire an IP address from a router, well typically from a router, a DHCP server can actually run a lot of different places but in the most common um, home and small business scenarios that uh, surveillance guys like us deal with it's typically going to be a, sim a simple router that's running that server so uh, of course we're going to log into that with our uh, with Internet Explorer browser or Firefox I'm just going to crack it open and type in my router's IP address and get straight to it um, just click OK to log in and now I'm looking at the, uh, the user interface from, from my little $40 Netgear router that we're, we're using today. Um, almost without fail the DHCP range is going to be found on a page that says LAN setup, LAN configuration, just plain old LAN. Uh, usually it's in a basic menu so if you have a router at the top that says basic settings, advanced settings. Sometimes it'll be under tools. It'll be on the same screen where you can set a static IP address for your router on your LAN side. Uh, so in this particular router, it's down at the bottom under advanced, uh, which I sort of disagree with, but that's okay. It's under advanced and it's on this page that says LAN setup, L-A-N. So I'm going to click there and I've landed in the right place. So this is where I set up my basic local area network configuration for the router. Uh, I've given it a static IP address. It's on the same subnet mask as the rest of my network. And so this is all ready to go. Now if you can see I've got my use router as DHCP server unchecked. <clears throat> we have some pretty sophisticated network configurations around here because of all the incoming video demos we have to have. So I'm actually um, running a DHCP server on a, a Windows domain controller. But for argument's sake, if it were checked, my DHCP range is always going to start with the first three octets of my LAN subnet. So it's going to be the same as the router's IP address, 192.168.1. something. Now what this means is that when the first new network client connects to the router for an IP address, it's going to get 100 as its IP address and count up from there. So the second device will be 101, third device will be 102, etc. Um, and if we had a really big network that might get all the way up to 254. The reason this is important to know about is because if you are in a situation where you've selected an, a static IP address for a DVR and it's inside this range, so say that I put my DVR on 192.168.1.105. Well, as soon as I get a six network client, the Netgear router, not knowing that I have that device set up as a static IP address, will go ahead and reassign the .105 address to this new device. And now we have what's called an IP address conflict, two different devices on the same local area network segment trying to share an IP address. And what that does is effectively break the network connectivity for both devices. So no network, no browsing it from another computer, no seeing it on the internet, no nothing. Neither one of them is going to work properly. So it's very important uh, just as sort of some note taking when you go to set up a network device uh, that's going to have a static IP address, you need to hit the router and find out what the DHCP range is. A real common scenario for new installers is that the DVR has been put on the network as DHCP and say it picks up dot 101 they'll just go into the into the DVR's network settings or the IP cameras network settings and just change it to static and keep all the settings that are already there and that's a big no-no that means the very next device that comes on the network is going to cause you some problems and it will inevitably happen a week or two after you're done with your installation you've been paid your customers happy you think everything's honky-dory next thing you know you're taking a 45 minute drive across town to fix a simple networking problem and you will of course have to reroute all of your port forwards and everything else you configured in that router so just find it out up front and make sure you pick an IP address that is not in this DHCP range so dot ten dot twenty dot fifty dot seventy five any of these would be fine but anything one hundred or over you want to avoid 
Uh, that concludes our tutorial on finding a router's DACP range. We sure hope you've enjoyed it. And come take a look at the rest of our video tutorials at www.apexcctv.com. Thank you.